I was almost up to my 50th mission and ready to head home. But it was my turn to stay grounded while my co-pilot, Lieutenant Richard Freeman, went on the mission. But fate was with me that day and not with him and the crew. They weren't with War Eagle either. We had commissioned her back in the States and flew her to Italy. We outperformed every other crew in the squadron and were honored to be assigned aircraft number one. Jose M. Salas was the tail gunner of War Eagle. Incredibly, he had just arrived as a new replacement the day before. He wrote about his experience, and it's a story that you'll never forget. He wrote that very early in the morning of the 25th of July, we were awakened and told that my name, Jose Salas, tail gunner in the names of Donald Robinson, radio operator, and John Kennedy, nose gunner, were posted on the flying schedule for that day. We got up, saw our names on the schedule to fly, and had a little breakfast. A truck was waiting to take us straight to the airplanes that were waiting. No briefing, no nothing. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what crew we were flying with. It turned out I was flying with one crew while Robinson and Kennedy were with another. While flying over Yugoslavia, we saw a few of our fighters in a little flak. The top gunner was very happy and singing because it was his last mission and he was going home to his wife and children. He kept on singing until the pilot, Lieutenant Freeman, put a stop to it. I don't recall anything else until we were in the middle of the biggest turmoil of my life. Flack all around us and then the intercom hollering, Fighters at 3 o'clock! I had three ME-109s and two FW-190s firing at our airplane and me firing back at them at 5 o'clock. When they passed, I saw something out of the corner of my eye and turned my turret and saw the flashes of an FW-190's cannons which were a direct hit on the safety glass of my turret. I was wounded very badly and passed out for a moment. When I woke, I saw fire all over behind my turret. I climbed out and crawled to the waist where Willie Gibson, waist gunner, was going around in circles. I grabbed him by the cuff of his pants. When he looked down, I pointed for him to give me oxygen, but the oxygen hoses were all shot to pieces. Then I pointed to the tail and he grabbed a fire extinguisher. We went back and put the fire out. While he was there, I tried calling the pilot, but the intercom was out. When Willie came back, I pointed for him to put the parachute on me. He put my parachute on upside down with the rip cord to the left instead of to the right. He opened the escape hatch and walked to the bomb bay. He walked over the body of the ball turret gunner. Apparently, he did not see him. I couldn't crawl to him because the escape hatch was open and I couldn't stand due to my wounds. When Willie got to the bomb bay, he looked back at me and waved his hand. I sat up dangling, my legs out the escape hatch, and pushed myself out. When I pulled the rip cord, my chute did not come out, just puffed up. I pulled it out with my hands, and when the parachute pulled me up, I gave a sigh of relief and, and just passed out. I vaguely remember going through the clouds, but nothing else. I woke up about a hundred feet and going straight at some trees. I pulled the strings of my chute and missed the tree by about 15 feet. Before I hit the ground, I tried to hit it with my good leg, but it buckled up and I hit it with my wounded leg, and the bones popped out of the skin due to a compound fracture. There was a house about 500 yards where I landed, and people looking towards me from their open door.